uh, basically I'm talking about when we're talking about the any uh, safety of any area, we look we look into what are the activity there, uh, activity are there, like it's a oil oil company, like it's a foam company, it's a clothing company, whatever whatever the people are there, whatever the activity, that actually precise what sh what the threat is there, that precise what the prevention should be there. So basically, when we're talking about any area of fire safety, any area say fire safety measurement, we have to look into what are the occupancy is there, what are the activity are there, and what are the hazard they are there, and what are the prevention are there. So this is that's how we're gonna rule out. That's how can we identify what are the challenges we are facing. So in this first chapter, the first thing law uh, and local legislation passed was that that this law applied to all provision shall be applied to both new and existing building. That means that this law is come in 216, you cannot say that my building is from previous, from that age. It has to be that age, it has to be old, but they have, they have to go for the compliance. If you are working in UE, UEK, USA, everywhere, anywhere, we cannot accommodate person without getting a certificate from fire brigade. That means fire brigade will come and rule out and do the consistency that what are the fire safety provision are there. And then you can have the authority that you can accommodate and you can allow people to come inside. So that means if you are working in old building, if you are working in a heritage building, if you are working in an old uh, university, if you are working in an old plaza, you have to you have to go and get, get the, uh, all certification within compliance. Uh, that this uh, chapter one also uh, clearly uh, identify the construction and installation certificate of occupancy. Now, if we come to the conclusion that what are the requirement of the what are the requirement of the local legislation? What are the requirement of NFP? It's a requirement. They need specific answer that what are the what type of construction is there and what are the installation are there. It's a requirement from the legislation from your side that what are the construction is there and what are the installation are there. Certificate of occupancy. That how many people are allowed? Like if you go if you go to the swimming pool, there are forty percent allowed. If you go eighty percent, that same pool, water can gonna come out. If you're gonna uh, use the elevator, there was written six people. If you put seven or eight person, it will not work. So that's why it's a similar, all your areas, either it's classroom, either it's working room, either it's computer room, you have to identify how much person should be there. So it's from your responsibility that you you have the certificate of occupancy. Next is and uh, danger and education, public fire education, duties and power incident commandant, the last thing, main, main thing is that, that you have to be answerable of all the activity, you have to answerable all the occupant and you have the record that how many people are there. You cannot say, that I don't know, maybe there are 200 people or 300 people. No, you have to specific. I have started from the decimal, I have started from the, you have to go numerically, that you have to basically specify it, that what is the task and how many quantity is there, how much you need it. So it's a basic requirement of the application uh, in the application. Then there was a simple understanding that you have to identify candles, open flame, portable cooking, carnivals, covered mall. These, these all things are in covered in chapter one. Uh, when you talk about chapter two, chapter two is not easy. I'm talking. I'm actually uh, narrating what written in uh, uh, fire safety provision for 2016. So this is chapter two. Chapter two say that whatever written in this over here like NFA code, NFA 10, NFA 20 is a part of your local code. That means this one single book is not your all answer. This one single book is not your all uh, answer to your all co compliances. That means in this book you're going to find more references like 10 portable fire extinguisher. Now, if you have this book, you have to go to the NFPA and you have to find what are the requirement of NFPA 10. That means that you have more knowledge on NFPA 10. NFPA 10 said that you cannot put the extinguisher more than 5 feet. That means it's your local requirement. So, in this chapter 2, we have endorsed more 46 standard. Come to the point again that what we are practicing in USA that's all covered in Pakistan law. You cannot say in USA we have this in Pakistan, we have this, no. We have completed. What we have done, we have given the references that there is a NFPA portable extinguisher, 10. Now, every year NFP revised that. 
So it's already come under compliance because we didn't say the NFP 2010, NFP 2009, NFP 2000. It says NFP 10. So that means we have windows and we have put our uh, inclusion of compliance to international market and whatever they use it as NFP 10, it's applicable over here. And if you do violate, you violate, you will go answerable in the court, you're going to answerable to client, you're going to answerable to whatever the community you're working in it. So there are more for 46 court which are the part of this legislation. And then this written that what are the guidelines, guardian are there, a center is ASTM, double one, double three, that method and you enlisted. That's mean the more further if you go into the NFPA, they are going to ask you to follow under laboratories, they want to ask you to follow American Standard Method. Now, working in Pakistan, when we talk about this, there we go to the client, people say that why should we go to the international uh, under laboratory certifications, because the normal pump we uh, are purchasing is like 20 legs and the UL pump is like 1 crore. So why should we go for UL? So, there was a no such reason to uh, ask them that go for the cheaper one. This is the only solution what we have learned from my experience and what we have practiced around the world that we ask whatever you are putting, like now you are putting like two, uh, 20, uh, 20 lakh pump is not your listed but your requirement says you have to go for that. So what you have to do, you have to make a compliance certificate that we are putting this now and we having plan like within five years and six years that we gonna adopt that which is you are listed because we cannot say that it's in our compliance and we are denying it in HSC in fire safety in around the world we cannot deny anything if something going wrong I have to say it's wrong okay how we can make it right we can make it right in three days five days six days ten days how so now what we are working in Pakistan what we say that if you are adop adopting a local pump, if you are adopting an uh, UL pump, you can have a le letter from your company that we have invested 20 lakh rupees now and we are in focusing that within a few years we are going to go for the compliance. Because you know safety never ends. You cannot say that we have put a 20 uh, 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 lakh pump and it's all finished. No. You have to go for the compliance, you have to go for the better. But by doing not putting something you are answerable because court asks you one uh, question that do you have the system or not they will not ask you that it's a, either you are listed and not it's a, a debate afterward first they will ask you that do you have it or not like there is an extension or not that means did you try to provide safety did you try did you work out so main catch main concept is that that whatever NFP said, they recommend best state of the art thing. UL listed, top line, BS99, BS476, NFA compliance, uh, ASTM standard test. But by the local books, what we are doing in Pakistan, we have most of the firefighting system, which are installed. I've been to Shogat Sanam Hospital, their system was like 30 years back. So now they want to go for the new system, but they don't have the budget. So what they have, they agree the compliance and make a report that we have the requirement within five years we will gonna change to UL something whatever it is so now it's a one and a half year pass so people are working like that so same thing you have to do you have to make a compliance make a compliance means you have to make a work make, make a working that whatever system you have either it's equal to compliance if it's not the compliance make a written letter to your senior that it has to be changed so uh, the next chapter, chapter 3 is authority having jurisdiction. It's a very, very common question. It is very easy question. People say, uh, I was hired, uh, I was hired by, by one company for the consultancy. I went there, they asked me that we have a plenty of certificate, uh, plenty of uh, proposal. Most of people have that CFPS certified. So why should we give you that engineer to do this job? CFPS means that NFPA certified person. So I tell them and I'm telling you also and I'm promoting that that because having something in book cannot solve your question. Like this written that in portable uh, NFP 10 that if you just put all uh, uh, 150 uh, fit uh, gap and you can have all uh, fire social there. But there was written also that according to hazard you have to identify the prevention. 
if there was not a person consultant or engineer in between you cannot have the idea of what kind of hazard you need what are the protection you can need so just simple like that that these are the people we are uh, uh, authorized from the government to have the permission like do tell me who going to answer me like building control authority they don't know anything about fire district administrator they don't know something about uh, 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 fire municipal admission these all people are don't know nothing about nothing about fire how can how going to they can you specify and allow you so what we have done like i was doing with the one project international project over here so i marked that certificate i marked that they need more fire certification and they need more pumps so that consultant asked me that no 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 we do we have done many project in ue we do not need i said if you are working in this area in this performance of fire safety in this performance of fire brigade in this performance of challenges you have to go and fight you have to go and find a rule find a ruling and have the best safety practice so they have done they have adopted the bottom line is that that this these are the people who have the authority who can accept or this accept your proposal like if you have done this fire extinguisher over here you can go to the town nazim and get the certification from there this is court says but if you go to the uh, town nazim they say we don't know about fire we don't know anything about this how can we get the certificate fire brigade cannot get the certificate who's going to get the certificate by books if you look at this they are the people who are authorized do you think they understand the fire do you think they know what we you are talking about you going to talk them and they understand i don't think so it is part of legislation that you have to be answer like that why the question come to why because the question come to why is that that something happened like bairan town something like that baldia town court gonna ask them the reason the people uh, name are here is that that court gonna ask them that did you check that's why is it in there so what i suggest to my client what i suggest to my uh, students that we should go and have a letter ready for them that what if i have i have uh, marked this area for exit i mark that area and put written on my letter head that as for the a u j this is designed do not go and submit somewhere if you want to you can go and have the submission over there but you must have a written answer with you maybe after 10 years that gonna let her help you so this is why we recommend that whatever you design whatever you suggest you have in return remember remember that god have sent us with two angel in our shoulder why i have learned from my morning my morning prayers in uh, my childhood that there were two angel on my shoulder one gonna write not learn gonna write my good thing one gonna write my bad things is that clear so that's mean god have sent us a two angel to write so as an hsc as a fire expert whatever you do you must do writing you must have your simple word answer always with you to justify your activity so now chapter 3 is automatic uh, the chapter 3 they will des design the automatic fire detectors emergency exit access fire hydrant what are the garen in us tender and so on it's all detailed in there in chapter 3 okay in chapter 4 is a goal this is all i'm i'm narrating what is in your in our compliances the goal of these provisions shall be provide a reasonable level of fire safety what we call reasonable when you go for purchasing we ask for koi reasonable se cheez dikhana hai we ask for the reasonable answer that we need something cheap or minimum we can have them reasonable mean a cheap thing a reasonable mean minimum. book we say do not waste time for fire fighting take care of the babies and do do uh, put them on a safe place so that's mean that in healthcare i'm working with indus hospital there was a huge challenges there was a 
half building with occupants with uh, office work half building with uh, clinical work half building with uh, 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 day night living occupancy so there was threat every corner the requirement is varied so we cannot say that a whole building or, or, or all area has the same same uh, same protocol. The protocol has to be changed. It designed it decided already there that what are the protocols are there. The basic requirement of uh, daycare center is that your exit has to be wider. The exit has more space because when we want to evacuate, we maybe you are evacuating the hospital building by using the wheelchair. And the worst scenario which I was working from last 12 where pacifier which we want to uh, just look at, look at now also that pacifier mean that you have to by law divide hospital area in three or four areas and that all walls has to be concealed into the wall so a fire cannot move this from one area to another area that's what we call compartmentalization without compartmentalization you cannot have the fire safety strategy because you cannot take all the people who already in plug in if you pull out maybe they will expire so there has to be a system that you have to compartmentize the all building area so fire cannot go from one area to another area it's written on your compliance it's written on your requirement that when you talk about the healthcare you have to go for the compartmentization compartmentization is a very very easy to understand and very hard to follow so we have the same thing like mercantile, business and all things, so all classification of occupancy is written in chapter 5. In chapter 6 we have a general requirement like building education, fire drills, owner responsibility, occupant responsibility, it's all written on there. So you can understand from there that tempting the fire safety equipment, emergency action plans, the smoking of flames, candles and open fire special outdoor event that means in chapter 6 it's all written written means everything is there the bible is there you have to just understand what you have to go what you have to adopt and how do you have to protect in chapter 7 uh, basic thing uh, when you're talking about the history history of the world uh, there wasn't any houses there wasn't any uh, uh, there was there wasn't any Place, place of living before people live open air open garden people live in forest so they don't have challenges so as we develop our society as we develop things we just rebuild the things and we make and we create ourselves in a kind of danger for example i'm standing here above this carpet it's not fire rated this is fire highly flammable this is flammable exit is almost compromised i cannot say this is a conditional exit I can say that I'm sitting and standing in a highly, highly sensitive area which is accommodated with a wooden, with a mattress, with many things which is which can catch easily fire. And this is the reason I need more safety. This is need we need more provision of safety. This is the reason we should know with what are the what are the tasks we have changes. So now in our building we have many challenges like electrical fire safety. Electrical fire safety, uh, there is a one man Asad. Asad shown me, Asad, Asad, Asad. Asad shown me just uh, there was a one notification from that that uh, 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 given by our government that there should be electrical safety. And this is ready to fire provision. So there are main thing that in Pakistan what we talk we give all kids to K electric. That fire is from fire. Fire is from electric. Fire from electric. So basically in this chapter it is discussed electrical fire safety electrical fire safety is very important because i told you when there was no fire there was no electric there's no fire but where there's electric there are chances of fire and basically i have seen many areas many uh, go downs where people claim they don't have any kind of electrician electricity in there but when i enter there was a lift i said what about the lift they said it's a outer part but i didn't set any conclusion any uh, door in there and many things like that they put just put a one glass and put the uh, light beside that and even i've seen one glass is crash so you cannot compromise you cannot say that we don't have a electric and we don't have a chance of fire so when there is a electricity there is a chance of fire so you cannot compromise the first uh, first detail uh, description in that then the heating and air conditioning heating and air conditioning is very important 
because in case of fire heating area heating ducts take the fire from one place to another place that has to be closed so this is defined there that there should be a fire stopper there should be a, a stopper thing then elevator escalator and conveyor these are the open areas which connect one building to another building that has to be closed or there should be a solution there then utilities heating waste chute insulator stationery is simple basically the chapter 7 tell you what are the building hazard you have which you have not identified before that they have just ruled out that there should be a hvc system uh, there should be a electrical system there should be a heating appliances there should be a smoke control system so do you have to go and uh, just look into it what are the their requirement these all the requirement you have chapter 8 is construction feature this is the what we uh, this is we call the pacifier system that what kind of construction you have that does your construction stop the fire does your construction stand by with the fire does your construction help the fire what is the chance like this is a partition of i think so wooden so it's not compartmentalized it's highly flammable so if if you are working in uk it has to be fire rated if you are working in ue usa it has to be fire rated so it's all about the construction we want to discuss the uh, uh, fire safety uh, regarding pacifier now so in general construction fire doors what are the requirement of fire doors 100 time i have uh, i have been heard that is written on the book what are the book requirement but if you go to the fire doors they will just write a simple line that it has a compatibility to stop the fire that's it it doesn't specify things that's me you're giving a general idea now you have to take the certificate from the service provider the how your fire fire uh, your fire going to stop with the with which material which reaction going to stop the fire so your fire door is recommended fire windows fire windows is very common in uk in our uh, um, areas we have already marked the uh, areas that this is a fire windows we can use in case of exit and in case of fire the evacuation company can come from that door uh, that's window but over here we don't have any concept but we have many cases that once the fire fighter open the door there was a cage kind of bars you cannot enter from that so windows is very important recommended by laws that you have the fire windows which can accessible so the fire fighter can come or so the occupant can easily evacuate so it's written now there interior finish is the matter that i'm talking about fire proofing like we just discussed the material which we know which we need to be have safe something like that so the main requirement of the interior finish or an interior finish fire barrier smoke partition fire barriers this chapter 8 is 100% needed by law i'm not telling that pacifier is your requirement as uh, pacifier product pacifier provision is your need you cannot overlook it we want to discuss this chapter in detail chapter 9 is about stand pipe automatic sprinkler system fire pump these are giving a general impression that the, to our fire rating system sprinkler hammer must have this must have this and then they refer to the main and if you chapter where you gonna end up with a full description chapter 10 is the heart of this uh, this uh, this legislation is all completed if you just complete this i have started from that that if you have uh, any problem with construction you are answerable and you are punishable and you are you gonna be stayed behind a bar but if your product did not work it doesn't matter so the this uh, means of escape mean that in case of fire there was nobody stuck in uh, in this chapter you highly understand the all requirement all need you have to be provide to protect the person who can easily escape in case of fire like i'll explain next uh, in slide that what it's come is come the separation of uh, means of egress interior wall ceiling floor varnish uh, uh, exit closure headroom it's all detail are there that how much capacity of egress needed how number of how many number of required it's all written in chapter 10 so the most important is that someone asked me that if i want to be a compliance officer for this facility window 16 you gonna learn chapter 10 by heart if you can a good command in chapter 10 you can make any compliance because the main thing is life safety and if your means of escape is good there won't be any answer for any question for you for the fire life safety So chapter 10 is the heart of this uh, whole compliance it is very important it has to be uh, discussed it has to be um, uh, make sure in practice all the time 
I'm going to discuss in detail in this. Then chapter 10, there was a safeguard construction. Now, if your building is demolishing or under construction, what are the facility requirements from there? Then the main thing that we have with uh, names are with us, the ex fire chief from Pakistan, uh, Karachi, and a very experienced person. He knows that what are the challenges we face when we go for the firefighting, because people don't know anything. Uh, the first requirement from England or uh, where we have learned that when the fire came, fire asked the fire commander receiver person that what is the occupancy requirement, what are the occupancy position, what are the hazard you have. There should be answerable person who know everything about that building. That means admin must know the what are the specific hazard we have, what are the occupancy we have, what are the exit we have. So this is requirement you must have understand plus what are the fire reserve you have in shape of water and what are their accessibility, what are their connection. So all answers should be there in that in chapter 12. The fire department access, water supplies, flow, follow requirement of building and hydrant. It's all there. In chapter 13, they will ask combustible waste and refuse. That means that whatever coming from your office, your building, it has to be it has to be non-toxic, it has to be compliance with environment because without a good environment you cannot prove you are doing a good practice of HSC. So the last chapter is like that. And chapter 14 is occupancy of fire safety. It's now discuss all the occupancies, the daycare occupancy, how much uh, per square feet area is allowed, education uh, occupancy, daycare center, retention and correction occupancies, residential occupancies, hotel dormitories uh, occupancies. It's all detailed, detailed about the specific occupancies. Apartment building, mercantile occupancies, business occupancies, industrial occupancies. You have to just identify which occupancy you are working. You can have all detail over there. Chapter 15 is grandstand and beach, uh, like uh, open air we have the like melas and galas and tents like uh, I have been uh, hired for one of the uh, hospital. They were doing outdoor uh, uh, tents for this uh, COVID uh, season. So I have to make a compliance for that. So I have all the detail from this I just put out and ruled out and so we have the solutions there. If I am the superman and I come to the area, should I extinguish a fire with water? Should I arrange escape route? Should I blow the wind to the fire? What should I do? Is good double? So the exit is compromised. If I am the world powerful person, I only rescue a person, I can, can only provide an escape route. The first thing, the first uh, matter you started that if you have a means of escape compliances, you're never going to be asked, you're never going to ask from the court, you'll never be answerable to anyone. But if you compromise your exit, or if your door is locked, what we have learned in the recent fire, the door is locked, the door is locked, the door is locked. Because you cannot blame anyone else. First you just find a door, this which is locked, and you are within not in the, your non-compliance. So basically providing an exit, protected exit, is the main compliance requirement in every country. Either it's UK, either it's USA, either UE, either in Pakistan. So the main concept is that you have to be a good, good, good understanding of escape. Escape means the door, people can go easily equate. So the fire is basically fuel, fire and heat. 
from here we start the pacifier uh, so i'll give you an understanding that how if you see this building it's a building in uk its fire started from the one floor and traveled to other area because the elevation or because there was a opening floor to floor so the fire spread upside and spread all over so basically what when you are talking there was a it was 2010 or 11 like 11 2010 or 11 there was a serious breach in the engine room and there was a one you can see this what we call a valley where the uh, fire company british petroleum have this rigs he uh, the function of this rig is that they do want to pull the uh, oil from the uh, underground and they just uh, put the fill the other vehicle and they go to the other areas so basically when we are talking about the fire safety i can see this is metal surfaces i can see the water is there what is a hazard is there i can i cannot see a hazard because it's a metal structure and water is there something at the water can can be used so when we are talking now and i mostly 12 years past still they were cause causing still they were costing the damages they are facing british petroleum is finished now there was a one small incident in engine room and the huge company billion billion dollar company is finished this because of small incident which come in the uh, there, there was a serious breach in the room what happened in case in that room that there was a fire on that oil rig and as per sop Mexican they have three or four five fighter tenders. They just go there. They just pull the water and throw on the oil rig. Oil rig, oil rig means the material is there highly flammable, sensitive. When they react with water, it blasts. So what happens when it blasts? All the water, all the oil, or come from there and come to the water. So all the life under water get. Uh, simply, uh, simply get the uh, variant uh, result from that. So they are dying. Uh, very, uh, there was a fish dying, crabs dying. Underwater people, underwater life, living people are gonna die. So once on that spot, six people were died because of blast. Then they move on. They should go to the claims, and they find out that there was a billions of billions of rupees of claims, and still they all companies was finished. because there was small fire and fire is on above the water water is the safest what we have thought in our generation that fire is only be finished with the water so if something on the above the water so you can see what are the explosion and what are the things are happen over there just because of wrong fire fighting coming again pacifier mean you cannot rely on fire fighting fire fighting may be go wrong and put the basic disaster on the area so basically passive air protection mean cavity barriers cavity ceilings and compartment walls that means if fire started from any place it should not move to another place the uh, uh, warranty the guarantee the specialization is that which area is area near to the escape route which area where have the hazard area if something happened the fire will retain and stay there so basically uh basically what we are talking about we are talking about the safety and basically pacifier pacifier means that there should be a system like that if we have something for fire fighting which we call we have to make the record and if something we have for the uh, fire safety we have to apply i'll just narrate some sim- simple uh, simple product which can easily understandable is pacifier is fire door a fire door basically designed to stop the fire to go because if when we design the houses when we design the building we simply have the walls and when there is a no wall there is a door so that door have also the ability the door should have the ability same as the wall so in case of fire that can retain the fire so this is the main pacifier product we can easily understand again now we are talking about pacifier and rectifier there was two division in fire safety one is active fire one is pacifier active fire mean this fire fighting in case of fire we use a fire extinguisher in case of fire we do some activity in case of fire we are doing rational things which can stop the fire but in pacifier the product are there which going to work itself like fire door is there a fire will be there it will stop itself if the fire proof paint is there it will stop the fire itself 
if the fire barrier curtain is there it will stop fire itself this means just putting out the paper and putting in passive fire system is the main solution in a normal buildings and normal requirements so basically active fire means fire fighting and passive fire means shield uh, there is one old story i used to say that uh, my auntie my uh, grandma said that i have three auntie and uh, four uh, like four uncles but i didn't see one of them so you, you told me that at that time there wasn't any antibiotics so there was a one attack of fana bimari and one attack of that bimari so they expired so now we have a simple thing that we have antibiotics so if something happened it stop itself so when we have a child when we have child born we go to the hospital we just put the booster one booster two booster three booster six boosters so if any bimari or any kind of uh, uh, attack come it will prevail because of the antibiotic we have in the body so what we call pacifier system is fire protection system in the building a pacifier system means shield it will act and react yourself you don't have to hide yourself the simple psychology which i have learned from in the england that when old days they were, who were, who was the uh, main uh, main fighter of the uh, team he used to have more equipment with him he used to have more armor with him so so no one can hit him because if he get hurt the whole fight will be finished so basically the pacifier mean she pacifier mean armor so you have to pacifier system thing you have to stop the spread, spread of fire by putting pacifier prevention so there was a simple difference is active fire active fire system you need a person or electricity in pacifier you do not need electricity or person the fire will fight itself like uh, fire fighting paints like fire stopping material whatever will be there it will stop itself you don't have to do anything but in fire fighting active fire you have to put a person or electricity over there so you can fight over there active fire pacifier main difference is there for active fire you need a training you have the quantity you have the quality and then you can justify and then you're going to demonstrate it but pacifier once you put a fire door over there once you put the compliance thing are there the fire gonna stop itself basically i'm working many areas where put in uh, like there was a one bank i put the fire proof paint on the wall and in midnight the fire catch and the when the fire goes to that wall it was fire rated the fire stop over there so in the morning they know that there was a fire in there so the basic pacifier system means that if you put the thing over on the side the com within compliance side in case fire will start it will stop itself so the basic for uh, basic difference between fire and active and pacifier is that that you have to demonstrate that the pacifier product will work itself it's fire who operated and active fire people or electricity needed pacifier means simple that all fire in your control is simply cavity ceiling and compartment walls uh, you can take an easy example of the marines where you can see when when we see a uh, ship over there there was all you can see like that uh, all doors have seals so a fire a water cannot come inside so the decision maker can have a time to decide what to do or not to do so basically we are doing same thing in normal building that we compartmentalize the doors we put the smoke seal in there we put all the uh, fire stopping material on the doors and we conceal the area so fire cannot move from one side to another side uh, intumescent coating protection system this is all simple like simple thing that we have a solution around the world there was a, a beautiful lovely tower in uh, france what we call eiffel tower eiffel tower have three uh, three uh, restaurants in this uh, building so it's all constructed with uh, with iron iron bar so it's all fire rated so in case of fire if fire will be there it will not prevent it because of intumescent fire intumescent coatings intumescent coating basically stop the fire to be spread and the basic system what we have in pakistan they say just put a metal door there and you can have a compliance a fire door cannot be a only metal door that's mean fire door has something which can stop the fire your requirement need the basic concept of uh, painting the eiffel tower is that that in case of fire the electricity or the electricity cable on that uh, uh, eiffel tower can generate the fire and electrical ca ca can make the cause of fire and which can be prevent which can be prevent due to the conduction of heat because metal is the best conduction of heat so it's all all concluded and all painted 
internationally and locally we recommend that there, if there is any structure especially bearing load bearing it has to be within compliance and has to be fire protected by intrusion coatings like in a hall in a in a simple way in our building in an office we have so many openings uncountable openings so we have to close all opening so fire cannot pass from one area to another area passive fire protection is basically concept is very easy uh, like 1960s there was a one rocket which goes to uh, sky and uh, the people who were working over there they have a complaint that they have a short circuit on the wires so they worked for like two uh, two years and decided to come up with any technology so the uh, scientists who were, who have this desire designed this who he was just on a vacation he went to the sh uh, boating and he was sit, uh, laying down on the boating and he just see that there was a one eagle flying he said by the looking at the eagle we have designed the aeroplane so why not we find something for fire safety in our body so he just lit his uh, uh, his uh, he just lit his hand and he just find there was a one huge intuition uh, in his hand so he research on that that there should be a some psychology because when he burned himself he find a something in hands on his uh, on his finger so he work on it and within two years working he find out there was a one system intuition system which when the he when it get 100% centigrade it inhale like and gain extent simple thing he just paint the put the same chemical on the paint so when the fire was there so it enhance so when it enhance it will give the shield and that shield will fight for for 50 minute 60 minute 30 minute whatever the thickness is there so the combination simple like that the when there is a fire the, the, uh, the, uh, when there is a fire, the out of opening are required to be closed. It has to be closed to stop the area. This is the main area we have seen the normally upper the, uh, our floor for, we put the false ceiling and beside the false ceiling, this kind of all wiring are there. So it has to be closed, it has to be shut, it has to be stopped. Normally we have a door, fire door, but we just put like this, it's always accessible. accessible. So it's not it's a requirement of the legislation that fire door must be closed all the time. That's why there was a fire exit, there was a fire door closer on the exit door. No, you can see this kind of violation. Like the door you have, but there was a big gap in there. So if the gap is there, the, it cannot be a fire door because that route of fire can be escaped, can be compromised, compromised situation. Similar like that, this door is there, but there's a big gap in between, which can stop the fire, which cannot stop the fire, but it not within the compliance it has to be closed with the smoke seals like this kind of door what we usually practice that we put that door inside we have fire door but if the door is always keep opening it will not stop the fire it will not stop the smoke so this is one of the beach we usually see in pacifier like this kind of walls this kind of opening we see the solution is there there should be a fire bags over there which can close the opening so in the case of fire this area and other areas they are both protected this type, this type of opening, it should be closed with the fire barriers. This kind of opening should be closed with the fire barriers. And we have a like seven kind of uh, the solution that for the area to stop the fire. For electric and plumbing area, electric is the uh, source of fire, plumbing is the root of fire. Maintenance area, fire rated protection coatings, door and glazing accessories, fire protection barriers and curtains, protective bags and cabinet and adjacent ceiling. Adjacent and ceilings are the main ingredient which fixed all the item so basically these are the seven areas which we see in the building to stop the fire of fire